It's another casualty of war, so to speak. Not really, I guess this one doesn't really doesn't really classify as casualty of war. This was merely out of uh, trying to make the world feel right, you know? That's how this happened. This was more OCD related than anything. My original plan didn't work. I was going to, I, I tend to over-engineer this stuff when I'm repairing it, and uh, that didn't work out. So, we're going with a plan B on this one. See how that works out. See if we can fix this table. This table was moved because of OCD tendencies, and uh, she didn't like where it was. It didn't sit well with her. And she accidentally broke it, just moving it. One of the legs broke off, and shortly thereafter, because one of the legs was not in good condition, the other two broke off. It's easy to say, like, autism, you know? Just as a general thing, but... Most of these type of situations, most of the repairs that we do are more comorbidity related. So whether it be sensory processing disorder or OCD or lack of spatial awareness, you know, not knowing where your own body is in a space, not understanding cause and effect. Um, so that would be more like developmental delay, not knowing your own strength. I don't know what that one would classify under, but oh, what is a comorbidity? So a comorbidity is like a simultaneous presence of two medical conditions or um, disorders at one time. That's pretty much it. And a lot of times comorbidities kind of match up. Like you might have like, like OCD and autism or sensory processing disorder and autism. You know, the things kind of align. You see a lot of the same um, traits or diagnosis paired together often. And I'm probably using that term loosely, like a symptom of something is not necessarily comorbidity. You know what I'm saying? Like, like she doesn't have an OCD diagnosis, but moving this table all over the living room because she can't handle it where it's at is a symptom of OCD. It's not, but you get the idea. So these have little, little nuts in there that you thread the legs into, but the nuts are ripped completely out. So we can't rely on that. So we're gonna do the old screw and glue method. It's just kind of things that happen, you know, and you get you get used to it and you learn you learn a lot, so that's kind of cool. Not just about your kid, like we've learned a lot about Abigail over the years um, from behaviors and from actions and what she can and can't handle and the things that bother her in the world and all that. But then also you learn you learn how to be a carpenter, you learn how to do drywall, you learn how to do odd repairs on things you never thought you'd have to repair. If you've been watching for even a little bit, you know that we've repaired a few a few walls in this house. It's been a it's been a thing. One of them was just uh, putting her, her hand against the wall as she was going up the stairs every single time for, you know, years on end and eventually she just broke the, the drywall, not knowing the force that she should use when putting her hand against the wall, I guess. When she was little, we put lattice work up around her bedroom to protect the walls because she liked the sound and the feeling of laying down on her back and kicking the walls. It wasn't attention seeking behavior. It wasn't um, out of frustration or anger at all. She was actually very happy when she was doing it. It was, it's more of a, more of a sensory thing, I believe. Something she just enjoyed. So if you start kind of straight in with your hole and then you angle it, makes it easier to get that angle oftentimes go slow let the drill do the work I don't have a countersink bit I need one but a regular drill bit will do in a pinch you just got to control it countersinking um, makes it so that the head of the screw goes down in flush with the wood or whatever surface you're working with So yeah, you know, it it makes you mad, you know, sometimes. Sometimes you get angry about the repairs that you have to do and the things that get broken and stuff like that. But I think, I think that fades over time. It's more of an acceptance thing, maybe. I don't know. Just being honest with you guys, you know, you can... Those emotions are valid and real and... 
You're gonna feel them. I don't know what that material is, but it doesn't seem to be like real wood. That was weird. It's not super pretty, but it's gonna get the job done and you won't really be able to see it, so. It's actually honestly stronger than it's ever been, so. <laughs> There's that. The lamp is in is in poor condition though, yeah. Lamp, not so much. It gets set down a lot. We'll see if she can tolerate the table here. If not, we'll move it. We'll try it again, right? Yeah. I was talking about the reasons behind like destruction of property, right? And it's not, It's. I would say it's rarely just like I want to break this. Being bad. Right. Right. It's rarely that. And and when it is, like, we handle it accordingly. Mm -hmm. But I can't think of any time that it is. Right. Where it's just like, I want to cause chaos and break stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, of all the things that I'm thinking about, it's always like meltdown, sensory issue, OCD, things like that. Yeah. But that's what we were talking about outside while I was fixing the table. Um, got dinner is simmering. Sloppy Joe's. Yeah. Made from not, none of that man, which ain't nothing wrong with it. I'm just saying my wife's is better. So you do you, do you but. Wait, I'm waiting on the Worcestershire. Worcestershire? Isaiah's picking up Worcestershire on his way home from work. He's so, he's so cute. He calls to see what the dinner plans are. Yeah, Priscilla does like a made from scratch. I mean, she's not out there like juicing her own tomatoes and stuff, but you know, the the tomato sauce comes from a can. But like... We didn't grow our own cows either, but you know, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? All the seasoning, all the mixes, all the, like she puts vegetables in it. It's, it's gas, as the kids say. Hey, speak of the devil. It's the Worcestershire guy. Worcestershire. We need to have a real conversation about Black Rock and their role in the Maui fire. It's gonna get deep over Sloppy Joe's tonight. <laughs> isn't that, TikTok. isn't that? TikTok, man. Isn't that a stream conversation? Huh? That's one of those conversations we have while you're streaming. Let's stream tonight. <laughs> we gotta talk. Talk about BlackRock and the Maya. You're gonna have to enlighten me because I don't have any. Oh, well, Somebody... I've got a lot of TikToks to show you. Okay. And I want to whole... splash some Worcestershire. Just splash it? Yeah. How much? I'm gonna watch a you. A splash. What are you you're gonna doing? watch me? Yeah, you just, what are you doing? Getting a knife. You don't need a knife. Hey, you just, seal. just twist it. They didn't have any okra? Nope. They they actually had zero. Up at the cap. Do it at the cap. What do you say? So you just like, yeah, run around the cap. Mm -hmm. Open on a can and dip. Um, <laughs> they actually had zero bottles of your okra. Not one. Bottles. What out? Jars. What shall she do? You watching? You can't even see me through the TV. That's yes, not gonna work. Can. Okay. Okay. No, way more than that. Keep, keep going. Keep going. It's dripping a lot. Okay. Now mix it. With the bowl. <laughs> they actually look. This is nice. <laughs> Priscilla and I got our coffee and came out here. Okay. Enjoy our coffee out here in the morning. Reminds me of when the kids went to school back in the day. Yeah. You know, both of them send them off, Isaiah on his bus, and drop Abby off. And What's the temperature right now? Cold. Cold. <laughs> She's cold, she says. 70 degrees. It's 70, guys. It's <laughs> lovely. It's so cold. It's so cold. Brr. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is great. I love it. Okay, okay. I need to get to work. <laughs> Good news, guys. The table and the lamp stayed put yesterday, so it has survived one day one after day. being repaired. That's a win, as That's far as I'm concerned. I'm gonna make a Reuben sandwich. Where's the Thousand Island? Is it in the pantry? Probably. It's gonna be amazing. I did not make it, but I bought the ingredients for you to make it. Thank you. <laughs> so if you've been around for a while, you've heard this story before, but I love sandwiches, like love sandwiches. And 
I make a lot of sandwiches, so I learned how to make like sandwiches taste better, I guess. I don't, I'm not a sandwich artist. I'm just saying, I like sandwiches. I had an idea for a food truck. I think you're a sandwich artist. Thanks. The name of my food truck, it was gonna be all sandwiches, right? But the name of it was gonna be In Bread. Sandwiches so good you'll kiss your cousin. <laughs> I'm still cracking up every time. <laughs> Many of you have heard that story several times. I'm just really proud of that name. At this so. point, if any of you make a food truck, yeah, I'm gonna tell you you can have that name. Absolutely, you can have that. If you make a food truck that's, if you love sandwiches as much as I do, you have a passion for sandwiches, please name it that, okay? And invite and, us. And send us a picture. Yeah. Mm.